and welcome to Creatively Rich. I am your host, Ann Tipton, here today with Adrienne DeCoats, who you can find over at adriendecoats.com. Uh, hi, Adrienne. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Hello, Ann. It's great to be here. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about your journey from architecture school to entrepreneurship to employee. What did that look like for you? Well, it's a good span of time. I'm going to try to condense it <laughs> a little bit. But um, so basically, I started off like a lot of people, I think, when they graduate school, they enter a basic nine to five job. It feels like a big limitation of freedom. A lot of people feel like, you know, what am I doing? My, I thought, especially in architecture school, let me just backtrack just a little bit. You really are taught to focus on your own creative ideas and... Um, you know, you don't have any limitations. You don't have to make a building actually stand up or anything like that. <laughs> like, it's just kind of a, you know, a nice idea or a concept that you're working with. And in actual practice, there's a lot of uh, limitations. And I think my, my job was something that I had a lot of resistance to. And I discovered self-employment through, I think it was Steve Pavlina's website, probably back in 2008 or something like that. And there was an article that I read on that website, which was called, it was something around like the stupidest thing you can do is have a job. So it was just very anti, you know, idiots or like jobs are for, for dummies or something like that. <laughs> and so I read that and I was like, oh, entrepreneurship, that sounds amazing. You know, you can make your own schedule. You get to decide exactly what you want to work on. You know, why am I doing this nine to five job? This is, you know, probably not the best choice for me. So you know, without really knowing what I was getting into with entrepreneurship, I just kind of dove into it head first and thought, you know, this is definitely the path for me. And really just thought, okay, even though I've invested all this time and energy into this master's degree of architecture and gotten this job experience and everything, like, no, I'm just going to scratch that. That must be wrong. <laughs> you know, like that must have been a waste of time and effort. And, you know, I'm just going to pursue this entrepreneurship full force. And so that was basically what I did. And so I left architecture as a profession, that was in 2008, and pursued my business for the next eight years or so, you know, only to find that, I mean, I think the biggest lesson that I've learned is that it's not the activity that you're doing, it's the energy that you bring into it. Because my business, it was, you know, everything that I thought it was going to be, basically, it was freedom, it was autonomy, it was um, a creative outlet that was awesome for me. But there were also negative aspects in that, too, just like there were in my job. And, you know, some of those negative aspects were I kind of did the same thing that I had done in architecture school where I really kind of um, burned myself out, basically, just kind of became too perfectionist about what I was doing and just spent too much time and energy on it. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of but I guess like the main thing, because then, of course, my journey went to deciding, okay, I need to take a break from my business and feeling my intuition pulling me back into architecture was surprising at first. But then when I actually did accept a job in architecture, it made a lot of sense because it did end up being a really positive experience for me. Uh, I think the moral of the story is just that you can't always, you know, you shouldn't think that the choices you've made in the past are um, the wrong choices. It's like, I thought that that was a mistake that I had gone into architecture school and gotten that degree and gotten into that line of profession. But really, it's like there were still good things in that for me. And there was still good potential there. I wasn't really off track when I had chosen that because it felt aligned with me to choose architecture when I chose it as a major. And um, it's like suddenly I had decided, no, this isn't the right thing for me anymore. But really, there was still good in it. And, you know, the same thing with my business, too. It's like I had to take a step away from that to kind of get the perspective to see like, no, it's not just something that could burn me out. It's something that um, I can find benefit in as well. Or there's a reason why I felt inspired to do the business. So now it's kind of like I'm doing both. I've got the architecture job. I've got the business going also. And um, I have the perspective most importantly about, you know, really you're going to extract from whatever situation you're in in life, what you're focusing on. So if you're focusing on the negative aspects of being in a job or being in a business, you're just going to manifest more of that. And, you know, you can be unhappy or happy in any situation, basically. And when you are happy, when you focus on like the positive aspects, you're going to extract things that amaze you from wherever you are. Because when I first went back to my job, I thought, okay, maybe I'm taking a step backwards. 
maybe I'm, you know, taking a full-time job, which I had a stigma against for a while. And that's a step backwards. But really, like, when I changed my mindset about it, the job became something that was beyond what I could have imagined as far as I have a lot of leadership there. I have a lot of creativity. I get to actually talk to people in person, one-on-one, which is nice because before my business was all virtual and all, you know, um, not as much of the in-person connection, which I really kind of missed. So it's been a positive learning experience. Not always easy, of course, but I'm happy for those lessons and to move forward from here feels good because now I have two careers, which, which works for me as a Gemini. Like <laughs> I get bored kind of easily sometimes. So now I've got like these two things going on. It keeps me very occupied. So that's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I totally feel you <laughs> on that because, and I, I think it's so dangerous when we um, get too wrapped up in this is the right way to do things, right? And I, I see that so much in the online space and it's not just you know, a job versus entrepreneurship. It's like, well, if you're not doing Facebook, your business is screwed, you're going to die, you're going to starve to death. Like there are all these like super strong messages of like, you have to do life this way. You have to do business this way. If you're not, you know, doing a webinar a week, your business is going to implode and, you know, everything's going to fall apart. And you, you see these super strong messages And, you know, I understand where they come from with a lot of the messaging where it's like, well, this thing worked for me, so it's probably what's best for you. And I think in all of that, we kind of lose, you know, our own intuition, our own direction, our own guidance systems, because we're looking externally for the right answers for us. Um, Can you, can you talk a little bit about how that experience was for you? Like, how, how did you kind of come around to, to finding something that works on both sides of the balance scale for you? Well, I think it is just understanding about intuition. And for me, um, I'm a big believer in that we create our reality and that life is supposed to be good for us and things are supposed to work out. So I think just having that perspective that wherever you are isn't wrong, like there's good things to be extracted from whatever situation you're in. And also, like you're saying, following, you know, that there is a path for you that's unique to you potentially. Uh, Because I've had that happen so many times in my life where, um, yeah, I got the internal nudge to do something different or the inspiration to go a certain way. And that's really what's been most successful. And I look back at the times when I followed my intuition versus the times where I tried to follow someone else's system, you know, really precisely. (laughs) And even though I went against what felt right to me, I thought, okay, well, they know what they're doing. They've done it before. (laughs) So I think, you know, that comes up again and again, so that hopefully now I'm at the point where (laughs) I'm going to you know, hopefully always follow what the intuition is saying, because it really does have the best perspective. And yeah, it's not always easy to follow. It doesn't always agree with what the experts say you want to do. But um, I think that it is definitely something that's proven itself to me. So (laughs) I will continue to use that as my my main source of guidance. So do you have any advice or tips for for people who are kind of you know, starting on that journey of, of listening to their intuition, like, do you have any advice for how to kind of filter out what's your voice versus somebody else's voice? Yeah, sure. I mean, basically, to me, I think of intuition, it's something that basically comes down to your emotions and what feels best to you, which sounds maybe overly simplistic, but (laughs) it's, um, you just have to really, okay, here's one really good tip. Here's something really concrete, actually. I think that uh, you really have to not make any decisions about your life or think about anything too specifically when you're in a negative emotional place. Because when people are feeling like, oh, I'm in a, I'm in a challenging situation, I am you know, need to figure out this problem, and they're kind of in that feeling of frustration or that feeling of overwhelmment, and they try to you know, use their mind and think through all the details and work it out that's where you can just keep yourself spinning or you can make decisions about your life. Like, Oh, this is wrong. I just need to scrap this job or I need to just like do, you know, change everything. And that is not the vibrational standpoint or like energetic standpoint from which you want to make decisions. (laughs) And because that's when you're least connected to your intuition is when you're feeling like that. You want to wait until you've meditated or until you've done whatever helps you feel better. And then really take the time to let that inspiration flow about what you need to do next in your life. Because you know, everybody wants to figure it out when they're in that place of feeling like something's wrong, but that's the last time, or that's, you know, the worst time you could be thinking seriously about your life. Instead, you need to just like go 
take a bath, like do something relaxing, go for a walk, like just don't try to think too specifically about your life from a negative emotional place. And maybe that's, I don't know, simple advice as well, but that's really, <laughs> that's really key I've found because you could just spin yourself in circles forever if you're trying to approach things from that negative energy and the, the ideas and the insights that you need and the clarity will come easily to you. If you just let it go and go do something that helps you feel better and raises your vibration, then the clarity is going to land right in your mind. So. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I think it's incredibly <laughs> helpful. And I, I can honestly tell you, like, if you could get a master's degree and not like spinning and trying to work it out from the angry, you know, scarcity place, <laughs> like I, I've mastered that. So <laughs> it's tempting. When you're in that place, you really want to figure it out. And that's like the worst time to try to do it. <laughs> you can't trust your thoughts when you're in that place. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I think that you know, it, it really is a simple thing, but it's one of those things that, you know, you need to keep hearing, right? Because we forget. It seems very logical to, I have a problem, I'm going to figure out the problem, but there's no way to energetically access the solution from the energy of the problem, right? That's, that's yeah. totally different spaces of, you know, frames of mind and, and places of being. So I think, I think that's really brilliant advice. Yeah, um, it's really helpful. Yeah. So is there any advice that you have for people who are kind of in, in this place of like, maybe they're not sure what to do, or like, they really want to go after their dreams. What, what advice do you have? For people that want to go after their dreams? Yeah. Um, well, I think that you just have to realize that it's not you alone going after your dreams. It's like, once you've established what your dream is, the whole universe knows about it. <laughs> and it's trying to help you, <laughs> you know, and it, all you have to really do is just kind of allow that process to unfold. And when you get into the place where you're anxious about your dream and trying to figure it out and how to make it happen, then that's not the place where you can hear best what is naturally going to come to you to help you unfold your dream. Because, you know, it's just like the thing we were just talking about. If you're stressed out about your dream and you're trying to figure out what to do to make it happen, you're not receptive to the shortest, fastest, easiest you know, most natural path for you, which your intuition can give to you when you're in that place of just, you know, not taking it all as seriously or not getting as stressed about it <laughs> is the thing that I think I keep learning. Cause that's one thing that I really noticed when I reflected back on, you know, how things were manifested, had manifested for me. It's like my business, I put all this attention and time and thought into it. And sometimes it was really challenging to manifest the outcomes that I wanted. I had to really focus and really like get very disciplined with my thoughts and what I was doing versus things like where I live. I live in an awesome place. It's exactly where I wanted to live. And my boyfriend, he's awesome. It's a really wonderful relationship for me. Those things came into place much more easily. And it was much more from a place of just kind of allowing them to happen and trusting in my worthiness to receive them and just kind of focusing on what I wanted more than what I didn't want. So just kind of noticing the ease with which some great things had happened in my life versus the challenge, which some other things had happened that I put a lot of time and energy into just really, you know, brought me to a place of trust that life is wanting to give you, you know, it's wanting to manifest your dreams. You just have to not be in the way of them <laughs> by trying too hard and like thinking against them. You just have to allow them to happen. It will happen if you you know, can chill out and let it unfold, basically, which is a challenge if you really want something or you think you can't be happy without it. But that's the, the key too. you got to find satisfaction wherever you are. That will really help too. Anyway, I could go on and on about that. But those are that's probably the top, the top thing I would say. No, that's awesome. <laughs> I, like, I'm exactly the same way. Like the the place that I wanted to live the most came super easily. The man that I wanted to be with the most came super easily. But again, I didn't, I didn't have all this pushing and like striving yeah. energy. So like, it's funny how business kind of has its own, um, its own energy that like you feel, I, I feel like there's extra motivation to do that. Like logic -y, pushy, figuring out things play oh, yeah. for business. Whereas romantic relationships, you're just supposed to like relax and be happy. Right. So I was, and then he just floated into my experience. Right. So <laughs> Some people have a lot of challenge with that too. It's interesting because I can see other people who have certain issues around romantic relationship and I'll tell them about how I manifested my partner and yeah, they just won't be in the place where they can hear that it could be that easy. And I think, you know, there's people like that in business too. So hopefully that's yeah. what I want to do is just kind of leverage <laughs> that, you know, the ease and the flow in any other area that has been more challenging in the past. So 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Don't we all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a good place to be. <laughs> mm-hmm. Awesome. Adrian, thank you so much for being on the show today. I so appreciate uh, your, your insight and your tips. And I really think that that, you know, hearing, hearing the way to kind of reframe and step back from, from all of that striving and struggle like that, that's really the way to do it. And I really think that your message of, you know, making sure that we are allowing what's right for us in our experience right now, even if somebody else says that it's wrong, to just really follow that guidance, that intuition, uh, to know that, you know what, maybe if it's what's wrong for somebody else is right for you, and that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. So thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, message. you're welcome. <laughs> sure. <laughs>